everything that happened with 2020 and how for us things started turning uh, in 20 in, in mid 2020 in September uh, as the industry was going into turmoil and everyone was like shutting down letting employees go uh, I remember we had ramped up to about 65 total employees and then our our sales team we didn't touch them we we had we had set up a structure probably six months prior to that in which we could you could work from anywhere your phone will ring on your cell phone, everything. So we were able to quickly be able to 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 bring them home. They they work from home and that's how they started working with all of the hospital stuff. And then that started to generate enough for us to keep that group core people going. And that helped us tremendously to grow our operations team back to the standards and even, of course, more uh, because in a matter so in four months that we were lower than what we were planned in three months uh at the latter part of 2020 we recover all of our losses plus we added 20 percent to our total target for the year wow and in 2021 pretty much doubled welcome to peer talk a dialogue with business owners just like you peer talk conversations run the gamut of business challenges facing owners today the host of Peer Talk is Dan Crowley, founder and owner of Peer Executive Groups, which provides a safe space for owners to share their experience, grow their businesses, and learn from their peers. Hi, this is Dan Crowley. We have a number of great owners in our peer group network, just like you, and our job is to give you a voice here on Peer Talk. Our sponsor today is Anchor Industries, one of the leading manufacturers in the United States for commercial tents and accessories. Their team can help you select the ideal tent for your event needs. Their products are all easy to set up and extremely durable, making them a great choice for your event no matter what the weather. Call Anchor Industries today and ask for Saul Packness at 404-944-9914. Our guest today is Carlos Mino, Vice President at Classic Tents and Events. He's self-motivated, process-oriented, in operations, He handles logistics and supply chain management. His background includes three years as a controller and business analyst. He's able to bring a depth of financial understanding into the supply chain operation. We're excited to have him here today on Peer Talk. Welcome to another episode of Peer Talk. Today we have Carlos Mino from Classic Tents and Events. And Carlos is here today to talk about what it's like to build a team and create a culture with extensive growth in your organization. Uh, Classic Tents and Events is one of the largest operations in the country that's working out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. Welcome today, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're excited that you're here. We're going to uh, you know, address your growth and your expansion. The The number of employees you have is, is ridiculous. And um, also the topic of language barriers. I know um, in your marketplace uh, with your workforce, it has been incredible, your need for employees and you're getting them from everywhere. And so obviously there needs there's a need for bilingual um, employees and things like that. So so let's get started. So first off, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know uh, a number of people know you in the peer group network, and uh, but they probably don't know your background and how you found your way to uh, the event rental side of the business. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm originally from Ecuador in South America, so I made my way to the United States. Uh, I lived in New York for about 16 years and then moved down to, uh, to Georgia uh, roughly 12 years now. And uh, I was working with a distribution, with a large distribution uh, company that manufacture eyewear. And uh, basically through that, I, I moved through the ranks. I held uh, multiple positions all the way down from a supervisor to logistics, uh, to managing the whole distribution center. And then uh, lastly, in the finance side, uh, as a controller and basically communicating back to making the translation of what it means in the floor, all of the accounting terms that people uh, would use in the in the main office. So just trying to translate numbers for people and how that affected the day to day operations of a, of a distribution center. It was a, a 400,000 square feet facility. We had about 300 employees and uh, multiple um, 
you know, different sources and different flows. So it was a lot, a lot to manage, a lot to translate. So it was, uh, it was a, a great experience and it gave me a holistic view of how to manage a business end to end. Very cool. So um, clearly those skills are going to come in handy as you and Classic get yourselves closer to 300 employees. We know that'll be in your future at some point. <laughs> um, and the other thing you identified in that role is you, you're truly a connector, right? So you're translating the information from management uh, down to the next level and uh, connecting dots for people in the organization. So so tell us about Classic. How did Classic get started? Um, we some of us know Stephen. Tell us about Stephen and all that. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, you know, with with Classic, uh, you know, it's, Classic started back in in, in two thousand. It was actually uh, as a um, originally uh, some tables and chairs and some pop up tents is what we hear were started uh, through a marketing company during the Olympics. And they kept it as a as a as basically as a side uh, item that they will that would do afterwards. Uh, actually, the marketing company is very big here in Atlanta. It's called Corey. And uh, in 2000, they sold off that division and that it basically officially started classic tents and events on uh, on the, the previous ownership. Um, so uh, at that point, it was just uh, very small. Uh, like I said, just a lot of tables and chairs and some pop up tents. And then uh, that owner uh, took it over and pretty much had it for seven years until Stephen uh, bought it in 2007. And uh, ever since then, it has been, uh, you know, uh, just growth. And uh, and I think the key here is how heavily uh, invested Stephen is in, in the business and uh, and invested in making it grow. And, um, you know, basically he his willingness to 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 put back into the business and not just uh, be an owner to to just uh, take money, but put him back. Um, so through that, through all that process, I I was recruited. I was in, I was at uh, at a previous company, and I was recruited. Uh, actually, they were looking for somebody, and and they they looked into my network, and they the recruiter asked me. And when we started talking about it, um, it just kind of caught my attention because of. Uh, of what they were talking about, the growth that they were trying to do, what they were trying to to do with the company, and um, much smaller. And uh, at at the previous company when we started, we started small. So I I like that um, that environment of a small company being able to 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 make plans and decisions on the spot rather than going through the corporate ladder. So we started talking. Um, we started talking, and 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 at that point, I joined Classic back in 2016. Um, we we started with Stephen basically uh, saying what do we want to do how what do we want to do next and how do we want to grow this business and uh, and as I started to learn the process uh, I basically at that point I said okay so if if we want to do this this is what we need to do and that's where the journey started with uh, uh, building a team and building a platform that that will help us uh, sustain the growth that we've had. Wow. That's great. And the the thing I remember uh, from my background with it is, you know, it's been probably four or five years I've interacted with you and and uh, I just look at the number of employees that have been added and, and how that could challenge, you know, oh, my gosh, you know, where am I working? How do I you know, what's this what's this business all about? So tell us a little bit about what that looks like. So our average customer we work with in peer groups is probably got about 20 employees. So think back to when you started and, you know, you were probably 40 employees or something like that, right? Back in 2016, 17? 2016, 16, yeah. As a matter of fact, it was less than that. So we, uh, wow. I believe we had 23 full-time employees uh, and that included our sales team, our sales department, uh, which we had uh, three people. We had one person in the front office uh, we had a part-time uh, accounting person that will come a couple of times a week to help us. And other than that, everything, it was pure uh, the people that we had in operations. Uh, so, so yeah, so we started at around 23 full-time employees. And today we're hanging around 110 uh, is where, wow. where we're currently at. Yes. That's amazing. So, okay, so I'm thinking you're dealing with four to five times the number. And so how do you communicate and pass along 
your vision, uh, you know, from a leadership perspective to that staff? What does that look like? Are you having meetings or? Yeah, so so we have meetings, uh, constant meeting. I definitely don't want to get caught up in kind of like sometimes corporate is too much meetings, but definitely it is important for us to 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 pass along that message. Uh, Earlier on, my biggest thing, and I remember telling Stephen this, is that um, the investment of where we want to be is not going to be in just me. It's going to have to be in building a team. And and the approach that we took is building the, the structure for people to be managed. So we started mm-hmm. uh, we started organizing and going after leaders. And uh, and uh, many times uh, at the beginning, you know, um, uh, it was it was hard because coming from a different environment, understanding a different business and coming into here, sometimes you you doubt and you think, OK, this is not going to work here. It's, it's something else. However, one of the, the, the big things that benefited me in terms of networking, my first networking event was actually um, the ARA show in Orlando in 2017. And what I heard there and what I heard talking to other people through the classes and everything is that everyone was having the same issue. You know, at times lack of organization, lacking of having a proper, having teams dedicated for areas rather than everyone doing everything. So at that point, it kind of like solidified my thought process, we need to build a team. And then we started up on top because you need people that are gonna relay the message to you because as you grow, you cannot do it all yourself. So we started look, looking and separating divisions, looking at, you know, who's going to be the leader for field operations? Who's going to be the leader for our warehouse operations? Who's going to be the leader for our sales team? And then from there, building teams under them that will support them. Uh, so it took uh, a little bit extra and it took a vision for us to understand if we were going to get to X number, we're going to have to have a leadership team to support it and then be able to hire the people that they're going to need to continue the growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so through those leaders, we communicate and we do have a lot of meetings. Uh, we have, you know, our general operations meetings at the beginning of the week. And on Wednesday, we have uh, individual sessions with sales, with operations uh, that are specific to what those needs are for each area. And then we basically relied upon those leaders that are that are in those meetings to pass that message along. And and what I like to do all the time is that I like to go to job sites. I like to talk to the end, basically to the end employee, to the frontline employee. And I like to have conversations about what I I have discussed in this meeting to make sure that that message is getting all the way down. Because Uh, many times, especially at the beginning, I found it that the message was not getting through. It was getting caught up in the middle. Got it. Okay, great. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I think, especially as you expand, you know, how do you, what's the touch point? How do you know um, when your message is getting through? We we started this year talking about it in terms of conversations. How many conversations have you had? Do you converse with your key employees? Do they converse with their employees or, or their associates? And, and um, so that way everybody's getting the same message. But you, a- as a company, you've grown volume-wise. You've added all these additional um, business activities. Um, how do you communicate your – like how do you know that somebody fits who you, you, who you are? Is there – do you have your values identified? Are they on the wall? How do people know like that this is a company for them to work at? So uh, they're not on the wall yet. And but uh, we're actually in the middle of uh, basically completely redesign our offices. We started this project about two years ago in which we redesign our offices completely. And we're actually going to start doing that on the wall. But we started with our employee handbook and uh, and something that I've always uh, tell my, my, my leadership team is that uh, is a term that I always say is that throw the book at them. There, if you have something to rely on, um, you know, to communicate certain things, if you have a set of guidelines of how the company operates, uh, as you grow, it's, it's very important that you have those those rule sets in place. So that way there is nothing, no animosity. There is no thoughts of, uh, you know, you prefer this person or that person. Uh, so we, we, we work uh, to understand, making sure that people understand what we're about. Uh, our, um, you know, it, it, all our information is on the handbook. It, what we're trying to be 
customer service oriented company uh, that that cares about about the client. And that's a big thing is that keeping that as a, as a, as the core of our culture as we grow has been the biggest focus point. Uh, because no matter how big we get, I don't want our employees to lose lose uh, focus and the touch of at the end of the day is all about customer service. And we have seen it all over in, 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 in Atlanta, how we're getting clients because the customer service is not there. So, so that's definitely something that is embedded. And we always joke around because people join our team. Um, we do have a process to bring people into the team that we can you know, go in depth on that. But after a while, it's like they, they start drinking the juice is what we, 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 we say. Because at the beginning, people like, you know, they come in, they, 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 they're, they think that they're going to be, you know, nine to five in, or you're in operation seven to three thirty and then they go home. And then after a while, there's almost like they, they drank the juice and they'll, you have to like actually push them back and say, Hey, you have to make sure that you take your time because I have people, I'm, 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 a, I'm not a morning person. So I have a ha- bad habit that, uh, you know, usually I, my kids go to sleep and I, for two hours, I, I do some extra work. And I have to tell people in my emails, I do not expect you to answer this right now. I'm just trying to get it done because people will get on that. They will get an answer emails at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so they started drinking the juice at that point. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's dangerous, dangerous. But but it it definitely shows the culture shift. And and I think, you know, so you've been identified as one of the fastest growing companies uh, in the rental business, right? So um, having doubling your revenue in a short period of time, like a year and a half, having twice as many employees in within a two year stretch. So from that perspective, um, you know, obviously you have to create systems, right? So you're building systems for recruiting talent acquisition you're building systems for the on you were just mentioning you have a very in-depth onboarding orientation part to it and a mentoring and and making sure that somebody's looking over their shoulder as they go through that first stage right mm-hmm. so tell us tell us a little bit about what you've been up against because um i gotta believe the biggest threat is quality and customer uh, satisfaction. So tell us uh, about what that's been like the last 18 months. Yeah, that definitely has been a struggle. So uh, back in 2019, uh, Stephen and I made about a five year plan. Uh, so our target was in 2024, uh, basically, we were going to be at 75, no, 70% of the volume that we're doing today. That was our target. So that, that kind of puts it into perspective that we were not expecting to be at these volumes. This probably would have been our 10 year plan if we had put one together. And uh, so this was at the end of 2019. And, you know, everything that happened with 2020 and how for us things started turning uh, in 20 in, in mid 2020 in September. Uh, the us working with movie productions, they came back online and they came back with a vengeance. So during that period, one of the key things and one of the things that I, you know, I think at some point I even begged Stephen because uh, as the industry was going into turmoil and everyone was like shutting down, letting employees go. Uh, I remember we had ramped up to about 65 total employees. And I told Stephen, I'm like, I think I can shave uh, about 20, 25, but there is a core group of people that I know if we let them go, they're going to go somewhere else. And they're going to find work quickly because I just I, I, I have gotten to know a lot of them. And they're ten, for us, we are about 80, 85 percent uh, tenting. So for us, that losing that knowledge to me was critical. And and at that point, of course, we thought it was only going to be three months. I'm like, we can get through this. We can, you know, we can get through this, but we cannot go crazy and let everyone go because we're going to lose them. So we we were able to do that. And, and you know, through the process, it took us a month to take everything down that we had out there anyways, because it was already ramping up for uh, for for the holidays. But we kept that core group of people that allow us to turn it on very quickly. 
right? So that's when we started to this, decided to do structures that our teams have two experienced people, and then we can add on to those two experienced people as we go, and it allows us to flex up really quick. Um, and then our our sales team, we didn't touch them. We we had we had set up a structure probably six months prior to that, in which we could you could work from anywhere. Your phone will ring on your cell phone, everything. So we were able to quickly be able to 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 bring them home. They they work from home, and that's how they started working with all of the hospital stuff. And then that started to generate enough for us to keep that group core people going. And that helped us tremendously to grow our operations team back to the standards and even, of course, more. Uh, because in a matter, so in four months that we were lower than what we were planned, in three months, uh, at the latter part of 2020, we recover all of our losses, plus we added 20% to our total target for the year. Wow. And in 2021, pretty much doubled. Wow. Um, and and the core was there to just to keep those core people that 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 helped us add on and be able to grow quickly. That's awesome. So, That's yeah. yeah. And then okay. as we have added people, as I was mentioned to you earlier, has been the the we had we were we we're starting this program is called Impacting Leaders. I always believe that you always need to be uh, training and working with your. Uh, with your, uh, especially your key leaders, to make sure that they they understand, they communicate, and they do better. But they have a they have a process that you can. Uh, basically, we have a, a, a is a form that they take about 20 minutes to fill out, and it gives us a, almost like a personality um, assessment that can help us understand: does this, is this person going to do well in that position in this team? And it has been able to allow us to select the people that we want to bring in that we think are, are, are going to be successful. Uh, now, has it worked 100 percent? No. I mean, especially in sales, we struggle because sales, yeah. we have also grown. We, I think we had four people there right now. We have 11 uh, and that has been in a matter of a year. Uh, and and to to be where we are right now, we have struggled because, you know, uh, personalities and even with that assessment, it, sometimes mm-hmm. it just doesn't work, but but we have been pushing through and just making sure that that we focus on on engaging our leaders, making sure that people are welcoming when, when people come in to properly train, and and to make make them feel part of the team immediately. I think is the biggest key. Oh, that's great. I like that. And you know, so orientation um, and onboarding seems to be uh, a very critical. Th- step so that you don't lose people right after you've spent all this energy recruiting them and getting them on board. Um, I like what you said about the sales staff. I think that's always going to be the biggest challenge. I've been a salesperson my whole life. I will say that behavioral analysis is interesting and useful to identify someone who has the ability to be rejected again and again and keep going at it and not uh, slow down. Um, We recently have contracted with um, DISC everything. And so right now we um, are able to purchase all DISC products at wholesale, sell it to our peer groups. Um, And so they've gotten a a nice little discount to get access to those profiles. So we are we're we're all in on that. We're going to, um, you know, continue to help people make sure they have the right but the right people on the bus in the right seats. Right. Because I think that's the key. I will I will comment that one of the things about your organization that and you mentioned it early on, uh, your commitment to the accountability chart. Uh, and the organization chart is is phenomenal. You started with it in your head. You put it down on paper. You started to look at the roles in your company and filling in those next boxes. And so I think that helps a lot. We actually have to leave, but I want to have you answer one last question for our people here. And that is a lot of people want to get to where you're at. What how if you were going to give advice on how to put a good leader team around you for regular meetings, who would you put on in those meetings, those key key people? Uh, usually it's going to be the department heads. So so if if we have like we have someone in charge of field operations, someone in charge of uh, warehouse operations and someone in charge of sales. Uh, and we have three different sales points, so we, we keep all of them and we actually have a, a weekly meeting with all of them together uh, because you want to make sure that not only are you are, am I having communication with them, 
but they're also having the communication amongst themselves. And I encourage them all the time, like, you know, if I'm not around, to make sure that the meeting is still happening and they're still having the conversations. Ooh, and, ideal. And, and, and regardless, and those conversations might not be n- nice all the time. But uh, what I always say is that if we don't talk about it and if we don't take ownership on it, then we're never going to fix it. Then it's not, it, then the communication is just, it's, it's not true and therefore it's worthless. So the key is to make sure that, you know, we're always honest with each other. So to make sure that we keep each other accountable. Excellent. Well, words of wisdom. Thank you so much. So that is Carlos Mino. Thank you, Carlos, for joining us today. And we appreciate you and Classic Tents and Events for being part of this. Thank you for having me. Our sponsor today is Anchor Industries, one of the leading manufacturers in the United States for commercial tents and accessories. Their team can help you select the ideal tent for your event needs. Their products are all easy to set up and extremely durable, making them a great choice for your event, no matter what the weather. Call Anchor Industries today and ask for Saul Packness at 404 944 9914. You've been listening to Peer Talk from Peer Executive Groups, produced and directed by Noah Crowley and hosted by Dan Crowley. Subscribe to this podcast for notifications of future episodes of Peer Talk.